Guys, here I have an ultimate queen ant. She's big, she's shiny black with beautiful red touch on her head and she is nestled inside this test tube. I also intend on her creating an ultimate ant colony. You see, these ants are vegetarians. While almost all ant species require sugars and insects to survive, these ants need only one thing, ant bread. No, seriously, these guys bake their own bread. Guys, I'm so excited to document the progression of this ant colony. This is literally my favorite ant species ever. They're amazing. Look at this queen. She's amazing. Isn't she gorgeous? Look at the three dots on her red shiny head. Don't they look like a tiara made just for her? And look, she already has her first workers. Guys, you know the drill. We need to feed the colony. Queen is lying still as she's starving. She hasn't eaten in months. But here's the catch. We won't feed them sugars or insects. We'll feed them seeds. You see, these ants are called harvester ants from a reason. In wild, these ants literally eat only seeds. They find seeds and bring them back to their colony and mix their insides with their saliva, which creates a substance very similar to bread. So we'll feed them chia seeds. You see, while the queen is huge, the workers of this colony at the moment are pretty small. That's because the first workers of the colony, known as nanotics, usually aren't as big and strong as the workers who develop after the colony is already established and has more nutritious food to feed their babies. In the future, this species is gonna even produce majors, who are huge ants with giant heads specialized for cracking seeds. But until then, the colony has to receive small seeds that they'll manage to open. So let's give them the seeds. I'm always nervous when I open the test tube especially the test tube of these ants. You see, while most species are shy and don't want to leave their home, harvester ants love to move quite quickly if they find a good nesting area. So they'll for sure swarm out the moment I open the test tube. Okay, here we go. Done. I think that'll do for now. I made such a mess outside the test tube, but here they come. What is this? This wasn't here before. Oh well. Let's bring it back to the colony. More ants came to investigate. And then the operation began. They all started bringing the seeds back to their home. Look at the queen. She's licking her gaster. Wait. No. Why is she so still? For a few minutes, the queen didn't even move her antenna. And I was starting to worry. While the workers continued to bring the seeds back, the queen was super still. Then they got to work and started trying to open the seeds. Imagine trying to open a can full of food twice your size. But look at the queen. I hope something hasn't happened to her. Oh, now I see. The queen is also trying to open the seeds. Okay, I see. This is actually really crucial. I'm not sure if the workers will manage to break the seeds with their tiny mandibles, but I'm pretty sure the queen won't have major problems. I mean, look at the size of her jaws. If any of you are wondering how big she is, She's little less than 2 centimeters, or about 0.8 inches. In comparison to our black garden ant queen, she's giant. Our black garden queen is around a centimeter long, or about 0.4 inches long. The queen and workers kept trying to open the seeds, so I decided to leave them for a couple of minutes. A little while later, I came back to check on them. All seeds still seemed to be intact. Around an hour later, the situation still didn't change drastically, or so I thought. You see, it was extremely hard to see what the queen was actually doing. Seemingly no seeds have been opened just yet, but I was the most interested in what the queen was doing. You see, while these workers may be struggling with opening the seeds, I was confident that the brute force of the queen's jaw should be more than enough to break the seeds, but the queen really didn't like me interrupting her. You see, harvester ants are known to be very sensitive. By the time the first workers arrive, the colony usually gains confidence, while only the queen in the test tube can be extremely stressed. That's why it was crucial to leave this queen alone for literally months until the first workers arrived. But here's the deal, this queen is still very paranoid. Every time I checked on them, she tried to hide away, so I think it would be best to not disturb them as much as possible, as the queen could start eating her own eggs, so I decided to leave them alone through the whole night. The next day I could finally see some broken seeds 
and even some bread the queen was carrying around. They really had to work for hours to open up these seeds. You see while majors open seeds like that in literal seconds, these guys struggled quite a bit with their little mandibles. But now finally they could distribute the food to other members of the colony, including the queen. But guys, here's the problem. You remember how before I said that this queen can be stressed out really easily? Well, I wasn't lying. Every single time I came to check on them, the queen started appreciating my presence less and less. She grew really impatient of me. I really have to give them some space. But also guys, look at what she's holding here. That's a larva, aka one of her babies. But I couldn't find other larva and eggs anywhere. Oh no. Okay guys, don't worry too much. Maybe I just didn't see them. But there is a chance that the queen ate her babies because she was stressed out. So although I can't wait to continue filming their progress and evolution, I think it's time to give them some space. The queen needs to relax and start laying more eggs. Even yesterday, the brood pile wasn't even nearly as big as the brood pile of our black garden colony. And although this is normal, that was still really not a lot of eggs. So guys, it's time to leave this colony alone for at least a week, maybe even up to a month. They really don't need anything else right now. They have water, they have seeds, they'll be just fine. And meanwhile, we can focus on our black garden ant colony that has been exploding in population and some other queens I also caught this year. Stay tuned for that. Guys, what do you think about this colony? Aren't they super cool? Anyway, like I said, I think we shouldn't disturb them too much so the queen doesn't get too stressed out. And also let me know the name suggestions you have for this colony and also for the queen if you have any. See you guys.